Bob, are you home? Yes, yes, here can, I am. Can we, can we come in? Come in, please, yeah. Thank you very much. It's July 1st, 2020. David Thayer and Nat Pulsifer are in Essex with decoy carver and outdoorsman Bob Brophy. Yeah, you know, you're 88. 88. 88. All right, are you ready to go, David? Come here, come. He's been going all along, listening to you. <laughs> listening to you fly. <laughs> Good morning, Bob, and thank you for Good letting morning, us come in. Bob. Glad to have you over. Get a lot of stuff to look at. Well, that's why we wanted to come and be with you today, to take a look <clears throat> at the things in your shop that are important to you, uh -huh. things that represent your interest in decoy carving. Yeah. How do you get interested in decoy carving? Where are some of your decoys? And uh, just who is this guy, Bob Brophy? Well, I'll go way back to when I was a teenager. I didn't have any decoys. And I used to get out of the pond and, and it, Ducks would jump and take off. So I got down there one day and looked around and I went home and made some decoys. And I was probably only, well, I know it was, I was 14 because I could just start hunting when I was 14. So I, I started making those decoys. And interestingly enough, I set them right out in front of me. And the dang ducks would come and land on the other side of the pond. <laughs> so what I finally figured it out, I put the, the decoys over to the other side of the pond, then the ducks landed in front of me. They won't land in the decoys. They'll land in the decoys and swim into them. But I, I, uh, from there on, I've done, I don't know, 3,000 decoys. I numbered the other day 3,217. Where were you living when you made your first decoys? I was out in Eastern Mass, and I used to hunt the Hockamock Swamp all the time. Uh -huh. It's a big Hockamock Swamp down Rainham and Taunton. I, <laughs> I remember my brother taking me out in the backyard to, to, to show me how to shoot. And I had a double barrel, and he handed it to me and never told me there were two shells in it. And when I pulled the trigger, it knocked me right down. <laughs> but anyway, from there on, I I, I, uh, I went into hunting and like I say, I made my own decoys back then. And then I, I moved to uh, Gloucester and I used to hunt the Gloucester marshes. And then I come over here to Essex and found out the Essex marshes are a great place to hunt. Well, it's certainly been fun hunting with you on uh, out in the Essex and in the Rowley Marsh. That's been a great part of my life. Uh, how did you, how did you uh, develop your skills in manufacturing and making the decoys? I know practice, but did you have ever take any courses in? art or in no uh, uh, no no i'm all self-taught and uh, it just come naturally to me uh, I, I get a bird make a pattern put it on a block of wood saw it out and go from there and uh, well, i know we'd love to share some of that mechanical experience with you This is how I get started. I study my stuffed bird and I make a side profile pattern and I make a top profile and I make a head profile. This is the head and you can see that I carved two out. I cut them out with a bandsaw, then I start working on them. The bodies are white cedar and the heads basswood uh, from American linden tree and they're very tight grain, soft wood. It's easy to carve but it's, it's hold its shape. 
Now, how do I work on them? This this one here is showing the block of wood with the padding on it. Now I've I've gone down on, with on my bandsaw and I roughed it out. I've got my head roughed out. You can see this here. I roughed both profile top and the side. I continue it on further. At which point I, I start showing these edges off. When I'm roughing them down, it, it's done with the, the show form files, the body, the head's done different, but then I take a, my pencil and I mark out the, the feathers that I want to carve, as you can see. And the other thing is, I got glass eyes. These, these are brown glass eyes. I got them all, I've got them all colored white red, yellow, golden eyes, of course, have a yellow eye. Wood duck has a, a red eye. You have to match the eyes to the bird. And do you say that it takes you a day? Well, to go from... depends. I have sat down and, and done one of these in, in four hours. My but goodness. normally it takes me a day some of the larger birds, say geese, I might be three days on it. The uh, body is two pieces, because I'll separate them later on and hollow it out. That's made of white cedar. The head's made of basswood. It's very tight grain and it holds good detail. What kind of a bird is this? It's going to be a canvas back. A canvas bag. An old one. Now what kind of tools do you use as you go forward? I take and saw the body out on a bandsaw. The head come naturally is a different piece. And then you saw it out on the bandsaw. And then I take my sculptor's edge on well, my chopping block, not here, and I chop it out. And from there, I go to the sure form files. I use this big one for doing the outside of the body. And I round it all down. And then when I get up around the neck and the head, I take this round one and I can go underneath there like that and, and come around tighten it up a little bit this is quite a tool I like I like this and then you want to be going with the grain I'm, I'm going this way and, and you try to go with the grain. Sure. Even when you're filing or when you naturally when you're cutting, but now I'll come around and come in this side. You can cross the grain, but you can't go back into it without tearing it up. I use this small round one working up around the head here where I can get in these small areas. And, but when I rough out the body, I, I use it, that large one over there. How many hours do you have in the decoys that you're working on now? Oh, probably two hours. From a block of wood? Yes. Put the pattern on it, saw it out, chop it down. Now I'm, I'm roughing it down with this. With this. Okay, I want to come along this side here. This is going to be canvas back. Like this one here. You see the sloping forehead? Yeah. That's it. Oh, 
Uh, how much more time would you need to spend on this canvas back before it was ready for final finishing? Another couple hours? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the duck is really formed when you shape out the block. Yeah. Okay, hesitate here. Start out with a center line. These are coverage. Come down here like this. Coverage. Now, from under those comes the wing. The wing. So, here's my wing tips. And what I'm going to do is highlight them in felt pen. Actually, it's like a little boat. That's what they swim in. Check to make everything symmetrical. From center, hope, center, hope. Okay. I hit him. <laughs> you did it. You hit it just perfect. Yeah. Well, like you said, I've done one or two. <laughs> now, <laughs> what I do is I outline the feathers with a knife. Take these. I cut them like this and, and undercut them so the feathers show up. I don't know if you can pick up the fine line in the veins of the feathers and in the body. See those lines? Yeah. I burn them in, but I burn those lines and it makes it look feathery. Could you illustrate burning? We burn from the back and it shingles just like a roof. Some of the feathers come over the ones behind, and that's actually the way the bird feathers are. They lay one on top of the other. They, they shed rain, shed water. I put the center, center, center line of the feather on, and burn the veins. I carve it out, do the detail. That's, that's two or three hours. Then burning, burning one hockey game. <laughs> yeah. I burn in the evening, and I'm usually watching the hockey game or a football game. <laughs> The main part of the feather is the quill. 
and coming off of the quill are veins. Veins. What are the parts of the feather? Tail feathers, wing tips, tail soles, coverets, side panel, breast feathers. Waterfall lose their flight feathers so there's a period when they can't fly. Mother can't fly while the kids can't fly. Yeah. But once the kids start flying, she regrows their flight feathers and then she can fly with them. You'll find them in thick thick vegetation when they while well, while they can't fly. Especially like the Ipswich River. Uh, up river where there's, where there's plenty of cover. They're not out in the salt marsh and <clears throat> when they can't fly. Now, now, if you look at them close, you can see the different feathers. Yes, you can. You really can. So I finished burning it so I could paint it for, for this session. And, and that's basically the finish. Then I put on a, a primer coat, white as a primer. Now is this an oil-based paint or? Uh... Acrylics. Acrylics. How many coats of different color would you put on before you're satisfied? The primer coat, the base coat, the color coat, change the shades. Like I say, time consuming, you just have to be patient and do it. And hopefully, the the back is dry by the time I get up to the head, so then I can do the head. The green wing teal. Look at the bird. See the green wings? This is quite a lot of color to this bird. Here's a finished decoy. Uh, Oregon Ducks Unlimited, 1993. They did 25 birds for them, and they, they sold them at the, the decoy auction. They used to be uh, carving show, the main show, Davenport, Iowa, Eastern Maryland, big shows. Eastern Maryland Waterfall Festival. Yes. And I, just, I did that for about 10 years. Boston Sportsman Show. I carved in there for 10 years. I was in Harold American booth, right in the, with the... Uh, with the newspaper. Newspaper. Dave Collins came by, to, I got a picture of him with my daughter. Uh-huh. Bobby Orr came by all the time. Jack Sharkey, the boxer. Yes. He was a friend of Sully's. He came in and see, see Sully. Is that one that you shot and stuffed? Yeah. I've got all the birds in New England. The Eiders, the Mergansers, the Mallards, Black Ducks, Teal. They're all stuffed in the cabinet. And you've done the taxidermy on them? Yep.
phone number? Uh, 3,335. Believe it or not. I've done over 3,000 birds. We'll get a pin. Green wing teal, 3,335. Bob, what is an unusual carving of yours here? Is there one that in particular you were proud of? That's my famous Preening black duck. Black duck is a native duck here in New England, and but they're being replaced by the mallards, unfortunately. But that's a black duck. How long does it take to make a oh, model like that? Hundred hours. It's probably one, two, three, four five pieces, his wing, a couple of pieces, the neck and head, the body, I know it's two pieces. When did you make that bird? Uh, probably back in the 670s. It's been around quite a while. What is this? That's a loom. A loon. Now, tell us about that carving. I made it look like it's on a nest. All, it, all these I carved out, all these reeds that he's built in his nest, and then the, the two eggs in there, and uh, that's a nesting loon. A nesting loon. <laughs> and she's a small bird for those two huge eggs. Well, you sometimes get them out of proportion, but... <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I will stand by that. Well, it might be... Uh, that's all made of wood? Yeah. Yeah. Feet. The other foot over here. This wonderful room is full of specimen decoys that you have made. And the, the scoters, is the long tail ducks, the buffalo heads, golden plover, black belly plover. We can't shoot these anymore. The law went on those, believe it or not, in 1920. Up top you got a green wing teal, cinnamon teal, and a blue wing teal. That's a common golden eye, and that's a barrel's golden eye. See the half moon? Yeah. Barrel's golden eye. That's a different. <laughs> then you got some different McGanders, red breasted McGander, common McGander, and the hooded McGander. Canvas back stuffs. The male and the female, canvas backs. I used to shoot them down in the Taunton River years ago. Hundreds of them down there. There's an oddball. That's a, a Labrador duck, which is a gone extinct. That's a good bird. That's a king eider. The 
This one here is a harlequin. I don't think I've ever seen a harlequin in New England, the, the West Coast. And this bird here is from Alaska. It's a Stellar's Eider. And this one wouldn't be hard to guess. It's a Spectacle Eider from Alaska. The wood duck's a beautiful bird. How long did it take you to carve the wood duck? From start to finish? A day. A day? That's no yeah. time at all. Well, I've done, done a few of them. <laughs> and of course, my favorite is the black duck. Well, you want to see something. See these clams here? All little bitty clams. I picked up this black duck. They started falling out of his mouth. All of those came out of one black duck. That's what they were eating out on the marsh. We're here in the hall at Bob and Bay Brophy's house looking at some carvings of songbirds and uh, other birds. Are these native? Uh, yes, most of all of them are. It's my baby chickadees. See those? This is a real treat, Bob, to see your other work. 1974, number 363. Now that's a real early one. Red breasted nuthatch, 74. Now my blue jay, 87. Number 811, number 3,314. Yep, it's a snowy plover. I'm doing over 3,000 now. Well, Bob, thank you so much for explaining your skills, showing us how you work, and showing us the work that you have done. This has been a wonderful time with you and Faye and your collection. Thank you.